make sure you grab different colors of spray paints, different sized thread edges, and everyday household items like cups or lids. My name is Arturo Lopez, and I created Spray Castle Studios back in 1999. I have then continued to show people diverse ways of creating ma master paintings in just a few minutes using nothing more than just spray paints and everyday household items. The beauty of this art is that you don't have to have a steady hand or know how to draw. All that requires is a little bit of imagination and some dedication. So join us, and you too can become a Spray Castle Master. I will walk you through diverse techniques of creating beginner level paintings, intermediate level paintings and techniques, advanced level paintings, and we'll take your skills even further to master level paintings. So if you guys are ready to embark into a new art adventure, then grab your spray paints and materials, let's get started. Alright crew, as you can see this is going to be a 3D painting. Uh, this is a master level spray painting. It was a lot of fun creating it and as you can see it's very unique so I hope you guys have a lot of fun making it as well. Uh, so if you guys are ready, grab your spray paints. What do you say we get started, huh? Before we get our cans, uh, I've been asked this question way too many times. <laughs> Alright, this is what we're going to do guys. Now this is actually used for um, cake batter. Uh, you can get this at Walmart. Uh, pretty much anything that tends to uh, cater to the making of cakes and it's these little funnels. I'm going to show you guys another way of creating this brick castle funnel because uh, I've gotten a lot of emails asking me well what do you mean get a, a piece of cardboard and turn it into a funnel. This way this may be a little bit easier to show. Uh, you can buy them. Uh, as, you're, as you can see I'm keeping three of them together just to make it really thick. Uh, and that's how the spray castle funnel works right there. You can regulate the amount of flow of spray paint that comes out of the tip by squeezing it together. Uh, if the more you squeeze it, obviously, you know, the, the thinner the lines come out. And that was basically the concept behind the, the plastic funnels that I, that I used to sell. All right. So here we go, guys. I'm going to use some duct tape. <laughs> As an engineer, I can tell you guys, duct tape works on everything. I love this stuff. I use it every day. Alright, so we're going to use a little bit of duct tape here. And this is just to make our our, um, our funnel more sturdier. Uh, it's actually going to make it durable as well. And it's going to keep all the three little funnels that, you know, that we kept together, together. So we're going to cut off a piece here. We're going to fold it inside out. And waste not one, not, right? So we're going to use this little piece, even though it got stuck here we're going to put it at the very top. All right. Nice. Now we're going to do that throughout the funnel, you know, make sure you cover it very well. You don't have to put any duct tape in the inside of the funnel. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you guys get, can see how, um, how I do the tip. I'm just going to use a little bit of duct tape. Now see, I'm going to create already like a little funnel here. I'm just going to funnel out the exit so I don't have to squeeze too much and I will actually use this funnel on my next tutorial so you guys see that it works so you guys don't actually and besides I don't I no longer sell the funnels uh, I was gonna say you guys don't actually have to buy the funnels from me I no longer sell them but see it's very easy to make now guys you don't have to buy the cake batter stuff uh, cones, you can do it yourself. Get a piece of poster board, cut off a piece, roll it in this shape. I encourage you to use duct tape. Okay, now I fold it out the top side inside. See, and then I use a little piece of duct tape to hold it together only because I want to put a duct tape right across here. Okay, so let's do that. Get a little bit of duct tape here. Now, this is going to keep our paint inside the funnel. That's what you want. I know a lot of you guys are using a little technique where you fold the sheet uh, in half. You know what? Forget folding it in half. Roll the stupid thing. Put some duct tape on it. Bam! You're done. <laughs> Spray castle funnel. All right. So we went ahead and you know what? You can also use uh, colored duct tape. You can use the yellow, the blue. You can have different um, funnels for different sprays. So you can only use the blue for the blue, the red for the red. And that's the beauty about duct tape, there's many colors. All right, so I'm just gonna secure this bottom part. Cut off a P 
piece right here at the top, fold it, and bam. <laughs> there you go, guys. And you want to leave this opening. This is where you're going to um, spray your paint into. This is the one that I use. Uh, as you can tell, it was also homemade. Uh, I like it a lot better. And the tip, I actually bought the tip from, uh, from the same store where you can buy uh, cake batter stuff. And so I had interchangeable tips on this one. You can do the same. Guys, buy some tips, put it at the end. Uh, yeah, there you go. So see, even though I used to uh, have uh, professional funnels made with plastic and everything, I still loved using my, uh, you know, the ones that I made myself. All right, now let's give it a try. Put a little bit of blue in here. Just wait for the paint to come now. And look, you can get some pretty intricate and very detailed lines. So see guys, that's all there is to it. The reason I created the funnel was because I wanted a way of creating lines. Um, you know, as you guys, many of you guys know, I used to paint uh, professionally uh, with oils and pastels and um, I used to use watercolors and so I wanted to be able to you know be able to manipulate spray paint a little bit easier so I can get some intricate and fine line work and so that's where the funnel came from and as you can tell I mean it works great you can even do grass strands look at that so see guys there you go. Even though I tell you guys you don't need a, a, an artist's hand or a surgeon's hand uh, to be able to use spray paints, you don't. But I mean, if you know how to draw, you can use the funnel to do all the fine little uh, line work at the bottom. And even if you guys don't know how to draw, you know, it's a great way to learn. All right, so it works. And there you have it, folks. All right, well, we're going to use it. Not as much, but we're going to use it on this next tutorial. What I did here is I got a frame and I broke it in several different pieces. I know, I actually, I struggled with it a little bit. There was a couple of nice frames that I wanted to do this with. But at the end, I was like, you know what? This is this is his first of its kind. So I haven't done this before, guys. So I just got a cheap frame, a frame that I actually found in a garage sale and broke it, broke it in different pieces. And as you can tell, I'm actually missing some of the pieces, which it's okay. Right, see, it's broken. I wanted to make it uh, real jagged, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. The concept behind this painting was that I wanted to show how the painting starts in a 2D base, you know, some trees, uh, some plant life in the background, some light, and then it'll turn into a realistic, kind of like you have the branches sticking out, uh, breaking the frame. I'm gonna be using this foam. Um, it's is actually to fill uh, gaps and cracks and it's it's a foam and I really recommend you guys wear gloves with this uh, this is my first time using this foam I know and some caulk we're gonna need caulk and so getting the stuff out of my hands was it was there for several days guys so wear gloves <laughs> wear gloves when doing this alright so here's the concept broken frame um, I wanna create the effect of a painting coming to 3D and then from 3D breaking out of the frame. I actually had intended on using some glass, kind of like um, putting the glass as if it was breaking out as the branches coming out of the trees were breaking it out. But I didn't want to have any jagged edges and I, uh, you guys know how it is. Didn't want to encourage you guys to, yeah, put a jagged edge, piece of glass sticking out of your artwork. I don't want anybody getting hurt. Uh, you can buy pieces of plastic that look like glass uh, you can give that a try. Anyways, I didn't. But uh, we're going to begin with the foam. Like I said, this stuff is really handy. Uh, I really recommend, and I, guys, this, like I said, this was first of its own, so I had a lot of learning um, cur turns and curves on this one. I recommend you get a big piece of poster board. Put it on the floor or wherever it is that you're going to do this. And then, just like we did the calendar, the, the, the 3D spray painting before this one, put this one on the board. I eventually do this, but I, as you guys can tell, I actually did this one before I did the, uh, the Sherry Blossom uh, tutorial. So I got to learn a lot on this one. 
I recommend you guys put a piece of poster board and then start working on that, especially with this foam. Now, it is very important, guys. You guys, uh, if you guys are going to use this foam, you wait until it's completely dried. I'm talking a day or two. It has to be completely got dry, guys, before you start uh, cutting it out. Uh, anyways, I'm holding, and you guys can't really see it from here, from this angle, but I'm using a piece of board here on the bottom. You can use caps. This is how I want it to stay. Remember, I want to give the illusion that the painting is coming out of the frame. Now, this is one of those moments, guys. See how I did that with my fingers? Wrong. <laughs> Wear some gloves. Man, I couldn't get that stuff out of my hands for, like, weeks. <laughs> In fact, I think... No, no, I'm almost... I almost got rid of it. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. This is some nasty stuff, guys. Wear gloves. I'm actually kind of surprised that the people in the hardware store didn't recommend that. Uh, maybe it's common knowledge. I just don't use it very often. All right, so what I want to do here, and as you can see, I'm using my duct tape uh, to hold this piece in, in place. So I'm going to fill in the gaps with this foam. And obviously, guys, I didn't know either. It takes a while for this foam to dry, like 12 hours. So you're going to have to leave it and wait for it to dry completely before you begin painting on it. So I'm filling in the gap and it actually took quite a bit. I, I had to go buy two cans. I started with one thinking it was going to be enough and it wasn't so I had to go back and get another one. Uh, this painting is not quite an 11 by 14. It's a little bit smaller. I'll show you guys uh, pictures of it once it's done. But anyways uh, I had to wait, like I said, about a day for this foam to dry and to keep the pieces of wood looking, you know, in the position that I wanted them. So I actually had to go buy to, uh, I think it was called Cocktail uh, Spears. Spears. Uh, well, anyway, I don't know what it were called. But you put, this is actually used in cocktail drinks and, you know, you can put your little um, olives through them. Well, I bought a bunch of those. And what I did is I, and I, I'll show you later on in this tutorial, I used it to keep my pieces of wood sticking up from, you know, from the floor, from the ground. So then I covered them up with this, with this foam. Now, as you can see here, I'm still using a cap, a spray paint cap, uh, I think it's like a piece of wood. And oh, here you go, cocktail spears. So I went out, bought me a couple of those. As you can tell, I already moved the frame onto a piece of poster board. Uh, this is actually a foam board, I'm sorry. And I'm just gonna break the size that I need. Stab the little spear, spear uh, into the, the foam board, and then hold my piece of wood up. See that? And then you go over it with, with more foam, so you cover it up. Right. Now notice guys how I keep handling the foam. That was such a bad <laughs> bad idea. Wear gloves. I really encourage you to wear gloves with this stuff. Alright, we're gonna use another one. It's got a little sharp point here at the end. And so that's what I'm using to stick onto the foam board. See it just break the size that I think I need. Stab the little point into the foam board and it'll hold my piece until the foam dries and then you know you can just cover it up all right now I decided to use foam here uh, well as an experiment but also because using caulk would have taken many little tubes of caulk to do this effect so in the spirit of experimentation I decided to try foam and it works great guys I've actually done a couple of paintings with this stuff already and it's a great way to create a pretty realistic terrain uh, when it comes to rocks uh, and you can shape it in many ways I use the little spray castle tool to shape it like I would my regular caulk uh, but that's to come later on all right so here I'm just covering up those pieces of plastic the little spears uh, 
Now I went ahead and with my caulk began doing a tree. I already done the bark technique on it so it looks pretty realistic. I'm going to create a couple more trees here in the background. Now remember the concept of this painting guys is I want to give the illusion that it's you know, you can see a painting in the background and then the trees come more realistic as they come closer to you. And eventually, you know, you're going to have tree branches sticking out and breaking the frame. Um, I know I've, I've gotten a lot of wonderful emails, people asking me like, how do you know what you're going to paint? Do you always know what you're going to paint when you paint? I have an idea. It doesn't always turn out that way, you know, halfway through the painting. This one changed as well. It changed actually a couple of times. Um, I was going to do more of a graffiti style of um, uh, painting with this one and thus that foam you know really uh, lend itself to to the effect that I was looking for but uh, along the way it just it turned into something else it became I started seeing rocks out of the foam so I started making it more into a, a landscape I know I really like my landscapings guys I grew up with uh, Bob Ross. He was the master, Master Bob Ross. Got to hand it to the guy. So I always wanted to paint happy little trees, and here I am, happy little 3D trees. All right. Okay. So, anyways, as I was telling you guys, the concept changed a couple of times, and I was actually very pleased the way that I changed this last time. I'm going to add a little bit more caulk here to create the effect of a terrain overlapping my trees. Alright. And even though I did this painting before I did my um, uh, cherry blossom, uh, I'm very proud of both paintings. They, they came out really good. Um, but this was the painting that taught me what I needed to learn to be able to create the other painting especially working with this foam now you see how I on the side of the foam it looks like it's dripping I did that on purpose guys and I definitely encourage you guys to do the same it'll give the effect well I'll show you later I don't want to ruin it for you guys I'm one of those guys that'll start telling you the movie you know and then hit <laughs> get to the point where you have to shut me up otherwise I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you how it ends it's horrible my friends hate me for that so <laughs> I'm gonna hold myself back from telling you <laughs> alright so so far we have some trees we have some terrain uh, we definitely have this foam which could be interpreted as oh many things rocks uh, I know my younger brother walked in when I was making this painting and he said, you know, what is that? What is that slime? He called it slime. And so he encouraged me to paint it green later on. And I said, well, that's, that's the slime of reality. He's like, what? I was like, no, I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. I was like, but the concept is there. I said, I want to make sure that it looks like all the spray paint, all the creativity, if you may, that whatever makes these trees is coming out. It's breaking through, you know, through, through the... Um, through the frame making it a reality so you know from that small conversation kind of took the painting to another level uh, made another turn here I'm just gonna add another uh, tree right here it's gonna take a couple of um, single lines I guess I can't call it single lines if it takes a couple of them huh but this tree is closer to us guys so it has to be thicker you know and when you do the detail on it it has to be pretty detailed I'm not so much worried about the trees in the background because when you paint them a lot of those grooves are gonna get covered and uh, you know the detail is not that important because the tree is not as close to you now you see the, the tree to the left you see all that bark well I wanna have that same effect on this tree right here because it's closer to us now this painting took actually this painting took about oh almost a week uh, to complete because I was waiting for so many things to dry and every time I'd show up and I'd see something that I want to change well that, that just means that 
I had to wait another 12 hours before I can do anything else to it. Um, this foam actually dries really quick. Um, I, I can't tell you exactly how long it took because I'd show up to the studio, uh, you know, work on it a little bit. As you can tell, this foam is still a little wet, and I can see that because every time I poke at it, it I see it moving. So, okay, I'm just gonna add a little more caulk here. Um, awesome. But before you start painting it, guys, you do want the caulk and the foam to be completely dry. Uh, I've seen a couple of uh, 3D paintings out there, and hey guys, it, they look great. But if you ask my expertise or my my creative uh, critique, I would tell you wait until it's completely dry. I can tell. I can tell that you you know some of you guys kind of hurried up and uh, started painting on it before it was dry. So. To, I definitely encourage you guys to, you know, to give this a try. It's, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, I've done so many spray paintings, hundreds of thousands, I believe, man. All the years I've been doing this, uh, I've done a lot of spray paintings. I've done uh, a lot of space paintings. I've done everything from nebulas to, oh my goodness, a lot, a lot. So I got burnt out a little bit on the space scenery, and you know, and then I started with. Uh, plant life and when I did that it kind of felt like I revitalized myself you know once I discovered how to do plant life and came up with all these techniques and now like I said being honest with you guys this 3d technique has brought it out in me again um, I'm painting constantly and I've, I've gotten a lot of wonderful emails from you guys telling me the same thing so hey I'm with you guys I hear you here, I used the Spray Castle Funnel to mix several paints. I had green and uh, yellow and blue. And then I would just, you know, put all that paint on on the foam. And now remember guys, this is already dry. This is probably a day after uh, the last little session that I showed you there where I was making the trees. So I'm just adding a little bit of green in the background. That's going to be trees. So it's going to be some of the, the tree leaves. Here's where I'm going to have my my sun come through, my light rays. And then see how I'm blending the yellow into the green? That's giving it a natural highlight. I encourage you guys to give that a try. So you don't have to actually add highlights afterwards. I recommend you do, but uh, you can start actually working on the highlights before you start working on the highlights. I don't know if that makes sense. I know a lot of you guys that have been doing this it makes sense. Uh, so before you grab a piece of uh, foam and start adding highlights to your trees, there will already be highlights in the background. So it would be a lot easier to blend your your background with your front. Alright, now here, remember guys, it doesn't matter that I'm painting the trees uh, blue because at the end, I'm going to use this Picasso funnel, go over it, and add the brown to the trees. So it's okay if you get other colors. Just gonna add a little bit of green here. There's a couple spots that the funnel didn't get, which is a little odd, you know, because the funnel usually does a pretty good job of getting all these little ends. But this foam had a lot of turns and a lot of curves, so it's okay if you have to go over it a couple of times with a couple, like a, like you guys saw there. I just used the green to cover some of those areas. You don't want to leave any white space. Remember, white space is called negative space, and Oof, don't even get me sorry. I've seen a lot of guys do palette knives where they scratch rocks. And that's You're just showing negative space, guys. You don't want to do that. But blah, 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 right? I'm just, I'm blabbering. Um, so here, I went ahead and just added a little bit of blue. I'm going to start working on my water. I do want to add some reflections to the water. And on this bottom part, I'm going to do a more realistic water than I did on top. Now, I did this on purpose because... I'm going to add a nice little effect here at the end. I think you guys are going to enjoy this. I'm just... Uh, you can actually go back to my beginner tutorials. And this water is actually quite advanced. But it just happened to be one of the first techniques I discovered on how to make water more realistic. And what you do is you cover white, put blue on top, or blue and then white on top. And then with the magazine sheet, go over it a couple of times. You'll be able to create some pretty amazing waves. Well. 
I'm doing that technique here on the bottom. Now, I'm not doing it on the top. On the top, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Just added a couple of sprays of white. See that? Now, this is that foliage that you've seen me use in my previous tutorial. And this is what it's called, guys. I actually bought a bag of it. And you can buy it at Hobby Lobby or any type of store like that. I'm pretty sure Michaels have it. Now, I refer Hobby Lobby because that's the one that you know we have close by here and this is what it looks like oh this is a different type and I'll actually be using this as well alright let me show you the other bag I know I have it around here somewhere but anyways this is what's gonna make your painting look more realistic and I don't know if you can tell but right on top of the trees I've already colored the trees brown there's a little bit of green see so I've already used the sponge to create some of the tree leaves and then as you get closer to the tree you can see some of this foliage see that so now you have plant life coming out from a 3d painting now I'm gonna show you guys how to make a 3d water now this is just clear caulk you can buy this in the store where you get the white one okay now somebody mentioned earlier uh, one of the comments one of the past tutorials that they would use a different color of caulk um, you know what guys I'll be honest with you uh, we were gonna do a funny skit about that but I actually I here in the, the hardware stores that we have all we have is white and clear so if there is different color of caulks out there um, I I would know guys this is all I've got to work with here in Carlsbad it's a small town and it's actually you know great thing that we have a, a couple new hardware stores that showed up so yeah if you can find brown caulk hey more power to you man um, I don't know uh, they say once you go brown you'll never turn it down right I don't know that's just the saying <laughs> anyways uh, notice how I'm using the clear and I'm going over the waves now you can actually use some of the tinting techniques that I've showed you in other videos and tint on top of these waves and this will just you know you can actually touch this water and that's what makes it so unique so you can actually touch the waves and you can go over based on the pattern that, that you painted on the bottom and I think I do that here a little bit I kinda realize what there's some waves and I go over it a couple of times with uh, with a clear, clear caulk anyways check this out guys I'm gonna be a little bit heavier I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on the caulk here only because I want to give the effect that we have water coming out of our painting yeah and actually to be honest with you guys it came out really good um, uh, this gave me some pretty good ideas about the next tutorial that I want to create for you guys I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it. I'm going to stop myself right there because I see I almost told you the whole skit of what I wanted to do. Then it's no fun. Then you guys probably won't want to watch my videos. So just know that it's going to kick butt. Next tutorial kicks butt too. All my tutorials kick butt. Man, I don't mean to sound cocky or anything, but shoot, yeah, they do. <laughs> hey, I have to like my tutorials, right? If I didn't like my tutorials, what the heck am I doing making them? You have to like what you do all right so here I'm giving the effect and I'm going up and down it a couple of times kinda kinda like what I did with the bark uh, technique on some of these trees because I wanna give the illusion that the water is actually running so it's gonna be running out of the painting see it's kinda doing a little funneling here at the bottom All right. now it looks a little yellow right now but when it dries it'll be clear right look at that now zoom out a little bit so you guys can see how that how that looks so it's actually going out of the frame this right here guys is what the painting looks like hanging in my studio uh, I will I actually did it with my phone so we do have a little bit of a video on it and this is what it looks like I'm actually gonna zoom in here so you guys can see all the detail you see all the trees in the back all the little plant life coming out of the painting uh, we have uh, new tree branches that I drew in that are coming out of the frame as well 
And then you have all this, um, it, it looks very graffiti like the way it's slurping out out of this, this mush. You see that right there by the frame? See how it's dripping down? All right. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial and keep those cans shaking. You can leave me any comments or questions right here, guys. Until next time.